well, there she is being emotional again. No, there I am knowing my worth and not letting you pay me less than that. Not letting you subtract from that because you feel like you can police well, who I am, well, how I lead and how I do my job. And if you feel like that, then I don't need to be here. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Makeup Diaries with Mariah. So I'm Mariah, and um, today um, we're gonna talk about something very, very important. And that is why you and everyone else need to stop policing black women's tones and facial expressions. So this kind of came about, and this is sort of like half a rant and half like story time. So just like get prepared for a little bit of both of those. So just gonna jump right in. So um, this past week, um, I believe it was Wednesday was the vice presidential debate. I don't know if they're gonna have another one of those. I don't think they should because Mike Pence is literally so hideous and awful to look at and I feel like if I stare at him for too long I'm gonna like turn into dust or something but I just remember the rhetoric that was like that that we knew was going to be um you know talked about about Kamala Harris and um um about you know Senator Kamala Harris and um you know versus Mike Pence and it's exactly what happened she was very composed she was very like professional she was polite she was smiling she kept like a straight face because she knew if she didn't if she did all that dumb shit that Donald Trump does where he where he like makes all those faces and is so rude that that would have like taken over the news cycle and it's not to say that it didn't that it still didn't that her facial expressions weren't a big deal because everybody made a big deal out of nothing because the fact is is Mike Pence was up there flat out telling lies and she just had to keep a straight face while this motherfucker just lied to her face I couldn't I really was like I don't I don't know how she's doing this I don't know how she's not cursing him out but it's because that's what black women have been trained to do you know we can't do too much we can't say too much we can't look a certain way because otherwise people blow it out of proportion because we're not allowed to have those kinds of emotions you know we're not allowed to be emotional because it, it just becomes the, the narrative that they paint they paint us in such a negative light like we're sassy which I is probably like the worst thing you could ever say to me we have a bad attitude instead of the fact that we're just re reacting to someone who is simply flat out lying to our faces and she had to do that and as a politician, I know lots of black women have had to do that so that they don't get painted, you know, as angry black women. Although I don't have any problem with anger, but I do think that they've painted, you know, black women in such a negative light as far as anger is concerned because it's it's easy. It's easier than, you know, validating our experiences. It's easier than validating that what we're saying might be there's that there's truth to what we're saying and to what we're feeling because people don't like to see the humanity in in black women in that way and so they call us angry. They paint us as angry as you know dis you know disgruntled and all types of bullshit. And so what we've had to learn to do is to police ourselves because if we don't everybody else does. You know, everybody will police our tones even if we're even if we're rightfully we have a right to be angry we're not allowed to show that we're not allowed to show any kind of emotion we're not allowed to be passionate in any way because it comes off as overzealous it comes off as over like it, they, they 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 turn it on its head in every single way and it <sighs> And I and I feel like very very like upset by this um, and by every the things that people were talking about the faces that Kamala Harris was you know making because all the black women watching were like I get it she's like maintaining her composure despite the many faces that she wants to make that she has the right to be making and I commend her for that but that's not a thing that we should have to do because it's a thing we've had to do for too long instead of just expressing ourselves freely like most other people get to do but we don't get to do that because then we fall into this stereotype of the angry black woman and all of a sudden that invalidates everything that comes out after it and i'm not defending kamala harris or any you know of her policies or anything like that obviously like i'm gonna vote for her because donald trump needs to be up out of here but that doesn't mean that we can't take them to task for you know the many many problems with you know their policies but the point is the narrative shouldn't have been like that unemployed ugly ass bitches Megan Kelly was she was on Twitter talking about don't make faces be a woman about it 
Are you joking? This is why you don't have a job, you unemployed, ugly ass bitch. Like, anyway, but she was saying, th- and that was. And that was kind of what was happening. Like Mike Pence kept interrupting her and she had to say like, excuse me, I'm speaking. You had your time. Let me have mine. And so she did it in such a much more polite way than she should have had to because the moderator, who I feel was much more aggressive and much more tough on Kamala Harris than she than he was than she was on Mike Pence. And she kept referring to her as Kamala instead of Senator Harris, even though she is still a sitting senator. And she kept referring to Mike Pence as, you know, Vice President Pence. So you see the difference there already? It's these little microaggressions that that most people don't even catch, but that black women have had to deal with for so long. So maybe we're angry because we have a right to be angry. Maybe we're angry because people are constantly undermining our feelings, undermining our authority, undermining our expertise in every way by writing us off as angry, which is ridiculous because there is nothing wrong with anger. I feel it is the strongest emotion that we possess and that we should tap into it more often because most people quell that anger for so long that it builds up and it builds up and then when it bubbles over to the surface, then you explode and you can't like put the lid back on. But if you let it out every now and then, you good. Like, I let it out every now and then because some people deserve it. So here's where we get into the story time part of this. And I've decided that um, if I do a second video every week, that it's going, I don't know why I was using that, that it's going to be like a story time video because, you know, people like those a lot. So it's time for story time. So this story, it kind of starts my junior year of college. Yeah, it starts at like the tail end of my junior year of college and it kind of goes all the way through my senior year of college. So junior year of college, I was, you know, a theater major and I, even though like my my love of it was kind of like fading and I knew that I was gonna wanna go into, you know, film and, 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 and you know, content creation and, and like digital and, and like that way. Um, I was still very active in my theater department in college and in, uh, you know, our one of the very few theater, like student theater organizations that existed on our campus. And as a matter of fact, I was the only black woman I actually was the for a while I was the only black person who was on the executive board of this organization and I you know I I felt like okay if I'm gonna be here I have to then be a voice for black women a voice for black people because a lot of what we did a lot of what my old university did it was very white and it was very like white savior like that was their thing you know they do shows like hairspray and say this is such an important show right now. When there is never an important time and uh, to do hairspray, it, it, never. We don't give a damn about white savior complex that you may have. Um, and then every year they do like the diversity show with all the niggers, you know. Um, but uh, so this organization was trying to like combat that, you know, and be something different. And of course, it didn't end up happening like that because the leadership was. 90% I don't know math but if I'm the only one on the board who's black and the only board on the board who's a black woman then that you're not doing as good of a job as you want to be doing but I digress so I I felt like I took on a lot of tasks you know in this organization because I wanted to you know not only show that I could do it but show like the validity of like having more more people of color on this board, having more, uh, you know, black women on this board, and more women of color on this board, because like, you know, these are the kinds of stories that we want to be telling. These are the kind of like people that we want to be here, you know, on this board. Uh, and, and, and we want to like put them in these positions. So I took it very seriously what I did, you know, because that's just how I am as a person. Like when it comes to my work, like there, there's nothing in my life that I take more seriously, you know, and I, and I'm going to put like 100% into everything that I do. And to some people, to white people, that comes off as me being aggressive, that comes off as me being a bitch, that comes off as me being not flexible. And these are things that came up over and over, or it comes off as me being too emotional, which is a thing that they 
said to me when I was so upset by it because I'm like I bend over backwards for this organization and you're gonna tell me that I'm too emotional when I'm not being paid to be here I actually have two other jobs that do pay my bills and I'm shirking them so that I can show up for you guys but I'm too emotional so I remember there was a time at the end of the school year when we were doing because we would have to do votes every year about for new leadership or whatever and so everybody pretty much knew it was gonna be me everybody was like well yeah I, like no one else would is really qualified to do it um it's qualified it was a student organization no one's qualified but as, as, as far as the people who were there they were, you know, not really in the position as I was, who had the experience, who had the leadership skills to do that kind of, you know, leadership role. So when it came time to, you know, vote or whatever, and when it came time to, you know, have um, to make that decision, they chose my white friend. And like, I love her to death. She's like my sister, but she very much was not in the same position as I was to do this work. Like she was not as, I'm gonna say like just in general, like she had not taken on as many leadership roles as I had. She had not done, she was not as prepared as I was to do this job. And then she even said that she didn't want it. And they still chose her over choosing me. And the reason that they gave, the reason that our president who was supposed to be this like, you know, like titan of industry she was this a glorious leader and everybody looked her through all these things but in reality she was always confiding in me about how she was like what the fuck is going on what the fuck is going on and i'm like girl we gonna figure it out okay we gonna get there and that's fine because that's just life we just all have to figure it out as we go but the fact that that she was leaning on me and, and we knew that we going into this that it was going to be the next year that I was going to be president if she wasn't going to be president. Like I was saying, um, you know, I, I basically, I quit because I'm like, if you feel like I'm too emotional to do this job, if you feel like I'm too aggressive, I come on too strong, then I don't need to be here because I'm giving you my time for free because I care. But since you don't care enough, you don't respect me enough to come to me with these issues and allow me to, you know, kind of, change my behavior because I'm adaptable because you have to be like everyone isn't going to respond to you know being led the same way so if you don't want to come to me with that then I'm out and it's cool it's, it's not a big deal I'm out I'm gone and then they kind of freaked out that I had left and I had done that and so they, they then was like well there she is being emotional again no there I am knowing my worth and not letting you pay me less than that not letting you subtract from that because you feel like you can police who I am and how I lead and how I do my job. And if you feel like that, then I don't need to be here. I'll go and spend my time elsewhere. I was probably failing a fucking, that's a joke, I never failed a class. But the point is, is that um, I, I, my time could have been spent elsewhere. I was here because I cared, but since you don't care enough, you don't respect me enough to, you know, you're not, I, to do this, then whatever, it's fine. Fast forward a little bit in the story because I'm running late. Um, I have somewhere to go. Um, I ended up, you know, being president because again, my friend, yeah, I don't think I can do this. So it ended up, we ended up doing a switch and, um, you know, because what they had initially elected me was vice president, but I was like, that's bullshit. Um, so then we did a switch and she was vice president and I was the president of the organization. Cool, right? Except, except the entire year the entire year was spent, you know, then again, I have these people on this board who I trust, who are, I respect, who are mostly like friends of mine outside of this. I have them the entire time, again, holding me to this standard that they never held the white, you know, woman to. Uh, coming up then with all these rules that I was breaking that were never rules. They're not written anywhere and they were never they were never enforced ever but all of a sudden when mariah comes on a bit too strong they're like she's burning bridges she's making enemies she's doing all this wrong and i had to take the brunt of it because again i'm the face of this organization but the way they treated me was bullshit and they made it so hard to do my job because at every turn they're trying to police me saying well you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't say this and you can't say that i'm like listen listen 
I, I okay I, I said okay but secretly you know I was talking to my like good 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 friend and he was also like on the board at the time we were like now I know most of these people do this for play but as people who've actually done this like for real for real you know we know the way this shit is supposed to work so like it's it's ridiculous that then they're trying to police us and tell us we're wrong because we're being mean and, blah, 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 and they want to like you know do all that dumb shit about like i'm not gonna say like caring about people's feelings are dumb but it, it was a lot of just a lot of you know them holding me to a standard that they never held the previous president to them saying well you should have known this when i'm like there was no there was no you know <laughs> there was no rule book left of how this was supposed to be done of how anything was supposed to be done and pretty much we're all just kind of like feeling around in the dark trying to figure our way out as anyone is in life but here again, we have an example of them thinking like I'm to be superwoman, you know, and then when I am, you know, I don't then of course, like no one pats you on the back for it. But they don't ever be like, oh, damn, shit really got done because Mariah went out of her way, sacrificed time out of her day, took days off of work for her job, you know, to make sure that things got done. But the second that, you know, something goes wrong or we have to cut a corner, all of a sudden it's like, you are terrible at this and you shouldn't be a, and you shouldn't be allowed to run this organization. And when so-and-so was in charge, they never did this. When so-and-so was in charge, they had me underneath them who was competent. You were not. I'm figuring it out, though. So chill. Um, so it just kind of taught me that... Some people will smile in your face. They'll call themselves your friend. And they'll, res they'll say that they respect you, that they need you, that they value you. But only up until a certain point when you're a black woman. Because the second you start to assert your own authority, assert as you have earned the right to, the second you start to assert your own, you know, dominance and you start to like step into these like roles that are wide open, that need to be filled then everybody starts to find issue with the way you do things. Then everybody starts to find issue with the way you speak and the way you, you know, the facial expressions that you make. And all of a sudden, at every turn, everything you do is under a microscope and you're being like heavily scrutinized for things that no one else is being scrutinized for. Then the issue becomes, it's like, okay, they put you in this position because they're like, we need you to be able to do this job because you do it in a way that nobody else can. And you go, okay, okay, I can do that. So then you step into this position and you do it and at every step of the way, people want to micromanage you. People want to, you know, trying to assert their dominance over you. Like, oh, 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 don't get too. No, 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 no. Remember your place. At every step of the way that they want to police you in that way and try and make you, you know, remember, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. We may have put you in this position, but remember who you are. Like, remember who you are to us. Remember that we can always take that away from you. And that is why, you know, you got to do your own shit. You got to make your own shit. Especially as a black woman, because you're, you'll be constantly put in these work environments where people... Where people want to police you and they they want to they want to do everything they can to undermine your authority to undermine your expertise to undermine everything they can so essentially i know that's a long story and i didn't even really get into it like i could have gotten into it like how these people forced me to do shrooms i was so stressed or how it basically like altered several of my friendships the point is, the point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, stop, stop like setting black women up and putting them in these positions, you know, of power and then policing the way that they do that in every way. And this isn't to, to say that, you know, we're above any supervision, um, we're above any critique, you know, to improve our job performance, but that's not what that was. And most times people want to call it that when they know that's not what it is. Where's my lip gloss? Oh, here it is. You were hiding from me, girl. The 
moral of the story is is that we need to start respecting black women a lot more than we do and we need to stop policing you know our facial expressions and then using us for memes using our facial expressions for memes when you're trying to get your point across but at, at any other point like calling them a professional you need to stop policing our tones you need to stop policing the way we do our jobs and calling us over you know all kinds of things that you would never say about white women who are in the same position when we're doing the same exact job and when we're doing it just as well as they were doing it um and it sucks that I had to learn that firsthand but I think it definitely taught me a lot about the way that that needs to be navigated so thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you guys next week